In my last video, I had been traveling the northern tip of Newfoundland, but I was now at a ferry terminal in St. Barb, waiting for this boat to arrive. Well, it looks like I'm going to make it, but I've learned a few things about the ferry to Labrador. First of all, don't just assume there's going to be a ferry any particular day. I actually wanted to get here yesterday, but when I showed up, it was canceled for the day. The second tip is get here as early as possible. Uh, especially if you're not on the reservation list, better chance of getting on board. And the third thing is if you are actually towing a little vehicle, get here as early as possible because the more uh, cars and especially trucks that get here, the less chance that you're going to be able to pull around and get behind the other guy. It's going to be really, really awkward. If you get here first thing, you've got the whole parking lot to turn around in here. But if I arrive now, I don't think I'd be able to get into that spot. But I made it. Uh, it's a nice day. I'm hoping it's a good sailing day because I don't like sailing, to be honest with you. Just like I don't like airplanes. The ferry arrived a little late and it prepared to disembark its passengers. Well, even though I got here early and I'm in queue, the ferry arrived, but it's not leaving. Not sure why, but nothing I can do about it. Just sort of chill out and Hopefully, it'll leave eventually, with me on it. Seems something needed fixing, and a service truck was brought on board. Finally, vehicles were allowed to embark, and the long wait seemed to be over. However... Hello. You gotta go back to the office with your ticket. And, and change over for the next crossing. Well, there goes the ferry, and I'm not on it. I was one of three people that didn't make it. But I'll be on the next one, for sure. So that was the 1030 ferry, and this is the 331 one arriving late. A lot smaller than the Port of Basque ferry to Nova Scotia, this one, named the Kayak W, resembled a great white shark, its jaws devouring its prey. Well, I finally got on. Only took nine hours of waiting. Now, I probably could have used that nine hours in better ways, you know, maybe take another little trip up the coast, but uh, you never know. I didn't want to lose my spot in line. Plus, it gave me some time to edit, so all is good. And it's still sunny, although I think it's gonna change. Now this may be rather surprising, but the Labrador Ferry actually doesn't go to Labrador. It goes to Quebec. I'll get there eventually. Watch out for the ninjas. It was fair sailing across the Strait of Belle Isle, and soon you could see the dotted houses of Quebec. I arrived at Lanza Claire just before sunset, 
with a sailing time of just under two hours. Welcome to La Belle Provence, Quebec. But my stay in Quebec was only a short one because just down the road was the big land. I was finally in Labrador. With light failing quickly, I just had enough time to reach Lansamore and a little pull-off spot by the ocean. Another beautiful view. The twinkling lights of the cove looked magical, but the winds were starting to pick up, so I put down my window cover for the night. Well, as expected, the weather took a turn for the worst. It was really, really windy last night and rainy, and it's rainy and windy today as well. It's a shame I spent so much time just getting across the ferry that I missed a complete day of beautiful sunshine. However, I'm gonna make the best of it. Uh, it gives me a chance to get some supplies and just kind of figure out where I am because uh, I really haven't really done my research here. I'm, I'm just here. Now I gotta find out where I need to be. I also needed to find out what was just outside the trailer, like this little stream. The shores were rocky and the waves battered them. So it's no surprise that a lighthouse was needed here. This is the Lanzamore Lighthouse, which is 109 feet or 38 meters tall, making it the highest in Atlantic Canada. But more than just rocks are scattered on the shoreline. As here lies the wreck of the HMS Raleigh, a British cruiser that ran aground August 8, 1922 in deep fog. It remained upright for four years, and since it could not be refloated, was blown up with depth charges. Being a Navy ship, it went down with ammunition and explosives, which still occasionally washed ashore. A dive team from the Royal Canadian Navy was forced to recover some of those seven and a half inch shells just a few years ago for safety reasons. Twelve crew perished in these unforgiving waters. With my history lesson over, I headed out to find a real campsite to stay a few nights.
Pinware River Provincial Park was only about 20 minutes away. Consisting of a small shoreline recreational area, it has 22 unserviced campsites, including a few right on the beach. Wet and wild. If you've never tried a small fiberglass camper, you may be under the impression it's a big hassle to set up. It really isn't, even in the rain. The Jeep hat shelters me as I put a block down under the hitch, then wind the jack down. I remove the chains and plug, unlatch the pin, then bring up the jack until the ball is cleared. The reason I disconnect the camper is so that I can travel with just the Jeep. A little leveling, pull the back stabilizers down and open up the front window. The new Outbacks have quick-release struts, which I might switch to someday. I'm done! And part two is enjoy the view. Gorgeous! If it wasn't just so darn wet! Freed from the camper, off I go. I'm kinda used to road repairs, but this is a much needed improvement to the young Trans-Labrador Highway. This is Labrador's major roadway, which goes over a thousand kilometers to Labrador City and beyond to Quebec. At the top of a hill, I take a minute just to scan the beautiful coastline through the drizzle. This is the Pinware River. Along with its rugged beauty, it is also a major route for trout and salmon as they migrate up from the Strait of Belle Isle. The southern part of Labrador gets around 55 inches or 1400 millimeters of rain each year which keeps these waterfalls flowing all summer long. The moisture also keeps a lush variety of vegetation. The area around the Pinware River was heavily treed, however at higher elevations the vegetation is closer to the ground. I needed to pull over and see this for myself.
No surprise, higher elevations means higher winds. This was very tundra-like, with deep patches of moss and spongy soil. While taking a break on a rock, I had a closer look. Although terrible soil for most plants, partridge berries and blueberries thrive here. But there is one evasive species, as the bud man has made his appearance again. With the weather getting worse, I head back to camp. Well, I'm getting hungry. It's time to come up with something to eat. I got my basics. I've got my cast iron frying pan. Uh, tonight, I'm gonna use ingredients that I've used over and over again in the past. No big deal. I like to travel with the same stuff like a zucchini pretty easy to find one and they're easy to store uh, some soft tofu now it might be a little bit of a challenge on the road but i was in corner brook at a walmart and they had some so that's a bonus and some stir fry udon noodles easy to pack don't need refrigeration that's the basic ingredients however you also need some vegetable oil it's stir fry of course and one of my favorites soya sauce but tonight i'm gonna go totally radical and i'm gonna throw in some peanut butter oh yeah it's got to be good right let's find out my apologies for the video quality here as i thought the new gopro could handle low light first in the pan was the sliced zucchini then the cubes of soft tofu. A generous splash of soya sauce. And a big glob of peanut butter. Add in the noodles and a couple of minutes of stir fry. On to the plate in just five minutes. Well, here it is. Yum, yum. The challenge in eating it is not what it tastes like. It's holding the GoPro and eating with my right hand because I'm left-handed. So hopefully I don't spill it. Mmm. The peanut butter does add to the flavor. It's not just salty soya sauce anymore. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that more often. Whoop. If I can eat this. Mm -mm. Okay, for five minute meal, this is pretty good. And, and the peanut butter does actually really enhance the flavor. I like it a lot. Mmm. This is my kind of road food. Well, it's raining again. It's been raining on and off all day, and it, by the sound of it, it's going to rain all night, which is okay with me. I don't mind the sound of rain at night. Actually, I find it comforting. I actually sleep better. Lightning's a different story, but just a gentle rain, you know, the pitter-patter on the roof 
this fine. Just before dusk, the rain stopped and the fog rolled in. Enough for a cool stroll on the beach. Well, I think that's enough for one day. Time for a good night's sleep so I can head up the coast tomorrow. Let's see what adventures await. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please follow me as I continue to explore Labrador's southeastern shores.